and this is exclusive OR gate. And the property of the exclusive OR gate is if you have a two input exclusive OR gate, two inputs here, I label them as A and B. When both are same, like in this case, 0, 0 or 1, 1, it's going to give you an output 0. For rest of the other combination, it's going to be 1. Another way to recognize exclusive OR gate, if you have more than two inputs, say there's another input over here, C, so you have three inputs. Whenever you have number of ones in the input, so say I have one here, C is set to zero and B is set to one. Right now, number of ones are even, so it's going to be zero. But if the number of ones in the input are odd, so say if one A is zero, B is zero, C is one. Now number of ones are odd because there's only one input that's high. The output is going to be one. Okay, so that's a couple of ways of recognizing uh, exclusive OR gate. What we have here is one, two, three, four, five transistors right here. Let's try to uh, analyze the circuit from here. I have five volt going into a resistor that, and then going into the LED. From here, I have, basically this is very similar to the uh, OR gate. So I have two of these transistors connected in parallel. The base of these two transistors is connected to input A and input B. Over here, I also have five volt going into a resistor, going into the collector terminal of this transistor, where the base of this transistor is connected to a resistor, and this resistor is basically connected to this, uh, this path right here. Also over here, this is sort of like an end gate where I have the five volt going to a resistor, going to the collector terminal of this transistor, and this emitter is connected to the collector terminal of this transistor. And the base of these two transistors is basically connected to A and B inputs. So let's say if we have A and B both set to zero, zero, what would happen? When we have A and B, that zero, that means you have zero amps going into the base. So there is nothing traveling over here. There's nothing traveling over here. Obviously, it's gonna, it's not going to complete its circuit. The uh, red LED is going to be off in this case. That should be pretty simple. And therefore, we have zero here, correct? Let's try zero one. Any of the input is high. So say A is uh, one and B is zero, okay? Current will basically take this route, correct? There's a uh, there's a, uh, some small current going into the base of the transistor. It makes a connection between collector and emitter. Current will flow in this direction, gets here. You also have some current flowing through this resistor, getting here to this node. And you also have some current flowing from here, getting here to the base of this transistor. Why? Because A is one, but B is zero, so there's no path for the current to flow to the ground. All of it is gonna go to the base of this transistor. When it reaches the base of this transistor, it makes a connection between collector and emitter terminal. You already have current flowing from these two parts going to this, coming to this node, and then with the base, some current coming in, it's going to go directly to the ground, making the connection complete. So basically your current is gonna flow this through this route right here, all the way to the bottom, to the ground, completing the circuit and therefore LED is going to turn on. And therefore you have one here. Similarly gonna happen when A is one and B equals to zero. Let's try the last case, which is one and one. When both transistors are on, these two transistors are going to be on because A and B both are one. You got A1 and B both are one. So you have current flowing here to this node, to the collector terminal of this transistor. You also have some current flowing in here. Now notice here because A is one and B is one, it's actually making a complete straight path all the way to the ground. And the internal resistance of these two transistors the internal resistance of these two transistors is gonna be a lot more smaller, roughly around 50 ohm, than what is going to be the value of this resistor over here, which is gonna be in kilo ohm. So current taking the route of the least resistance, all of the, of the current will flow 
through this collector to the emitter and then through this collector to the emitter to the ground completing the whole circuit so you have zero amps going into the base because of this resistor value and therefore even though we have some current here it won't be able to go all the way to the ground because there's nothing at the base so therefore LED is gonna stay off and that's what happens over here so let's now look at this circuit I have the very same circuit over here for an exclusive OR gate and I'm going to plug in 5 volt supply here and I'm gonna try these cases right now everything is zero zero so it's making a zero here and that's what we were expecting any of the input goes high the output also goes high B goes high A zero LED goes off when I press both of them that's when it stays zero but any of the input is high output is going to be high so that's an exclusive or gate for you as you can imagine this is a lot more complex than some of the other gates it requires at least five gates few resistive components that means it's going to be bigger in size it's going to be a little bit more expensive and it's just because it needs more stuff within that silicon block compared to end gate or or gate